Hello, thank you for tuning into the channel. So this year's African Cup of Nations finals has been absolutely filled with wild moment after wild moment. Obviously, the beginning of the competition started off right off the bat with a lot of controversy around specifically the Liverpool coach Jurgen Klopp. He had actually been asking his players not to attend this African Cup of Nations finals. People were obviously very upset by that because this is the opportunity for the players to play for their national teams and that is something I would assume every player, not just in football, but every other sport would love to do, which is play for your country, represent your country, and give your blood, sweat, and tears for your country. But he was asking them not to participate in this. Really what it is about is that a lot of people do not see the African Cup of Nations as being an important international competition. When you're looking at stuff like the Ballon d'Or or other competitions, it's just not put as in high regard as all of these other competitions. Jurgen Klopp himself even went on to call the competition a little competition. Uh, but in, in, in January, it's a, a little tournament in Africa. He did go on further to apologize for those comments, but just to show you the mentality that people have towards the competition for him to actually call it a little competition. But yes, he did apologize, which is good from him because he did realize that what he said was clearly, clearly insensitive towards Africans and people who enjoy the competition. And then you had an absolutely crazy situation. I really didn't understand what was going on in this referee's head at that moment in time. I mean, he had a watch on, so he could have been monitoring the time, but he blew the whistle to end the game completely early, not once, but twice. First in the 85th minute, then at the 90th minute which was just an absolutely crazy and embarrassing situation in all honesty. I felt terrible just watching that, thinking of all the controversies already with players being asked not to take this competition seriously and then something like that happening is just incredibly frustrating and stupid. And I hopefully he does not referee any other games. He, does, he, he clearly is not a good referee. He should not referee any other games, period. And another thing for him to blow the whistle early is that in AFCON, you've had these awfully long VAR calls so far. These VAR decisions where the referees are reviewing the footage take forever in this competition. I remember I was watching with my dad one game. It was in the group stage. I'm not sure exactly what game it was, but I literally changed and put on headlines and then I began scrolling through just because I was bored through all the channels looking for something to watch. And that probably took like five, six minutes. And then I changed back and they, the game had not restarted. They were still in the middle of this VR call. So for that referee to blow is even more crazy because they did have VR calls in that game. And then you also had another situation where the national anthem of a country was played or the wrong national anthem of a country was played, which obviously is bad. However, with all of these terrible things that have happened, nothing trumps what happened just the other night in Cameroon, which is just an absolutely tragic situation. I cannot even imagine what I would feel like if I had been involved in something like this. So it was Cameroon versus Comoros in the knockout stage. Just in case you don't know, Cameroon is the host nation in this. And obviously Comoros is some small island nation that I'm sure most people don't even know about. I'm sure many people, even just saying it now, they still wouldn't know where it is, but it is a small island nation located just next to Madagascar. You could probably see it on the map here. So you can imagine people in the country would be excited to see their national team play against the small island nation team which they were obviously a lot more likely to win and they did end up winning the game however around the beginning of the game you had a large crowd trying to go through this gate and they were in such a big rush and such a big hurry to get into the game that a stampede actually happened and tragically sadly at least eight people had died and at least 35 injured that is according to al jazeera Several people were killed when crowds surged at the entrance to the Africa Cup of Nations match between hosts Cameroon and Comoros. Eight of the deaths were recorded. Two women in their 30s were involved. Four men in their 30s, one child and one body taken away by the family. That's according to Al Jazeera. From watching all of the other news stories on that day, it did, did sound like at least two children had been injured. Some people were saying that the number of people might even be more than the eight that has been confirmed at least at the point that I'm recording this at this time. So uh, there are two things that I think I take issue with in this situation, which is one, the first issue is I don't understand why when it comes to crowds, it's like people seem to almost lose their humanity almost. Let's say that even if you're late for the game and you may miss the first few minutes, is missing the first few minutes of a game more important than an, uh, your fellow human's life that you might actually be trampling on the bodies 
of somebody as you're trying to rush through a gate. It's just obviously like a really sad thing. Another thing is that a, a lot of people who were there most likely in the stampede were not even supposed to be in the stadium in the first place. Because of COVID-19 regulations, the Cameroonian stadiums in the middle of this tournament are only able to take normally 60%, but at max, it's supposed to be 80% full. However, there were way more people inside the stadium at that time. So you can imagine some of these people involved in the stampede were not even supposed to be in the stadium in the first place. And now you have this many people dying because of that is just absolutely tragic. It's just especially sad when it's a situation that could be so easily avoided. And this is where we have to talk about the Cameroonian officials who are in charge of the stadiums and crowd management. They have known for months and months that they were going to host this. They had even prepared all of these stadiums for people to be able to come and attend. So crowd management should have been something that they should have been taking a lot of care of in that situation. I'm even thinking back to the Travis Scott concert incident where you had all those kids who had died, which was is still in recent memory. So you would think that maybe you would have taken this issue more seriously. Even one of the presidents of these federations had even come out and said exactly what I'm saying now, which is that they didn't do enough in the situation to make sure that people were able to pass by safely, which has just led to this tragic situation. Clearly there were deficiencies. Clearly there were failures. There were weaknesses. There were things, you, you can't, there are things that we should have, for, that should have been foreseen, man, come on. You take preventative measures. You, you take steps that anticipate that if certain things happen, those interventions will ameliorate or preferably bring to an end circumstances that can give rise to, to injuries, let alone loss of life. So here are some of the eyewitnesses talking about what they saw there. There were people behind who said push, and that's when someone left to open the barrier. So someone pulled, they pushed like that. Some fell on top of others. There were even babies. As the police closed the gate, a crowd of people came from behind, and I was stuck in it so I couldn't go back. I was below, and God spared me. I mean, I cannot even imagine what you would feel like in this situation. You're coming out with your family to hopefully see your team do well against a small island nation national team. So you can come over maybe with friends and family and enjoy your time there and then instead you're leaving with dead loved ones. I mean, there was even this clip of this lady who was at the front crying, who was caught on camera and just obviously just an incredibly sad situation. So yeah, that's about all I have for today. Obviously thoughts and prayers go towards the family members who have been affected by this issue. Otherwise, thank you for watching the video. Please make sure to like, comment in the video if there are any things that you wanted to add to this and you can check out some of my other videos on other issues pertaining to Africa and African politics. That is my main type of thing. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.